couple of weeks ago, I've remade an awards-winning project gallery by Dennis Nielenberg. And recently, I wanted to take a look at his interactive menu. I've never really seen a menu like this before. So I started thinking, how could I make something like this? And after a bit of research, I found what we call path commands. And with them, I was pretty confident I could remake this menu. And here we are. I'm going to remake this menu using Next.js and Frame Motion. And as always, the source code and the live demo are all available in the description below. So here I'm creating a Next.js application using npx create next app with the latest flag. I removed everything from the page.js, the page module CSS, and the global CSS to start with a nice blank application. And then I create the header components that I then import inside of the root layout so that it gets persisted across multiple pages. And then the first element that I want to start with is the animated burger menu. So here I'm adding a state to track if the menu is active or not. Then I add a simple HTML with a conditional class and then I use CSS for the styling and the before and after pseudo elements to animate the burger. I slightly translate the pseudo elements with the top value and give them a 45 degree rotation with a 0.3 transition. And with that we have a nicely animated burger menu. And the next element that we want to work on is the nav itself. I start by creating a component and import it inside of the header then I create a base skeleton using an array of objects to create the different links. And then I create a link component to externalize some HTML to make everything a bit more clean. And then I style everything and add a conditional rendering based on the state. And with that, we're ready to start animating everything using frame motion. Now for the animation, I create an anim.js where I create two animations one for the menu and one for the links. And then I use frame motion to attach those animations to the elements. Now we should have something like this. It doesn't look too bad, but we can definitely make it better. And the first thing we can do is to put an easing. And what I like to do is go on easings.net. And from here, I can like grab one, the easing out quart, I like it. I can grab the values here and then I can go in the anim.js file and create a custom transition. So for the enter here, I'm gonna have a transition with a certain duration of like, let's say 0.8. And then I can have an easing as well. And I can put the values from the easings.net here, the cubic base values. And then I can copy and do the same thing for the sliding. And then if we try this, this is looking much better. Now there's another problem is there's no exit animation. And for that, we can go back here in the parent and where we have the nav imported, we can use the animate presence component and we're going to add a mode equal weight. And if you save that, we now have an exit animation, but again, I'm going to add that transition to the exit animation so that it looks good on the exit as well. And now we have something that looks like this which is much better. And then I see that there's like some space here. So I'm just gonna do a quick fix here. Mention that the menu should have a top zero. And then it's also missing the footer. So I'm gonna do that rapidly here. Now the menu is looking quite good with the footer, but there's one thing that could be better is right now all of the links are appearing at the same time, but it could be a bit delayed. So it, there could be like a cascade animation. And we can do that pretty easily by going here in the links in the data here, I've given the index to the data. And so I can create here a custom number in the frame or motion animation. And I can do data.index. And then in the animation that I have, which is the slide animation, I can then use that custom number here and I can pass it to the enter and the exit animation. And I can add a delay to the enter and the exit animation. And if I save that, I have like a nice delay animation depending on the index of the links. And now we have a nice looking menu. We're ready to work on the curve animation. All right, so the whole concept for the curve is we're gonna use an SVG with a path inside of it. Right now we have a menu like this and I've created like the curve component here just to save some time. And I've also added some styling just to place it at the spot that you want. The SVG is placed like here and that's where the curve is gonna be, all right? So it's kind of a rectangle, a width of 100 pixels and a height of 100%. And so the first thing is we want to move our pen to 100 on the X and zero on the Y. So the point is now here and then we're gonna draw a line all the way to the bottom. And for that, we can do a line from X 100 to on the Y axis, we're gonna do the inner height. And now we're here and what we wanna do is create the curve, right? So we're gonna use the Q command and we can take a look because it's the complex one. The move and the line are really easy to understand. It takes two sets of parameters. So the first set here, the X1 and the Y1 are the control point, which is like the control point that will create the curve, right? this control point here. So we can set initially our control point would be at zero 
and then on the y axis it's going to be in the middle right so the inner height divided by two and then you can control the x axis here to basically emphasize the curve right but right now we're going to set it at zero and then the q commands require a second set of parameters which is the x and y here and they are the endpoint and so we're just going to close the loop and bring the q command back to the initial point which was 100 and zero so we're just going to take this and move it here and we can check what it looks like and we can see that we now have a curve and if i do for example 100 we don't have a curve anymore and if i do minus 100 we have even more of a curve and i'm going to do minus 200 to just just to show you and now it's going outside of the bounds of the svg right because we specified that the svg should have a width of 100 pixels so if i do minus 200 it's going outside right and so we can leave it at minus 100 which is the curve that i like and then what we're going to do is create a target path and we're going to reset that curve back to a null point which would be q100 and if i give that target path i can see that this is a flat line right and so now i have an initial and a target path that i basically want to interpolate between right and i can use frame or motion for that instead of putting it directly in the d attribute i'm just going to add a motion and then I can specify the initial enter exit. And then for it to work, I need to specify the variance, which is the path anim animation that we just described. And that's looking a bit weird, but the concept is here. Now, I just want to take the same easing that I had for the other animations. So here I'm going to put the transition for the enter and the exit. I'm just going to change it to maybe one second here. And there's some delay. I want to remove the delay here. It's not that good here. It's the menu is not going uh, far enough on the X axis. So I can just modify its animation and the menu slide here. Instead of moving it by 100%, I'm just gonna add 100 pixel extra. And if I try this, I have a nice curve animation. So that was it for this animation. We have a nice curve animation, uh, basically using the SVGD attribute and frame or motion, which is kind of nice. So yeah, that was it. If you liked the video, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.